Hey everyone, this is Mario again, coming at you with another movie review. As you can tell from the title up there, I'm reviewing a film from this year, written and directed by Jack Schneider, the guy who brought us one of the best remakes of the past decade, Dawn of the Dead, two good comic book movies, 300, which he also wrote based on the comic, and Watchmen, which people are dividing on whether that's a good comic book movie or not, but I think it is. And then, of course, a movie that he directed last year, which I haven't seen, Legend of the Guardian. I believe he directed that one. Yeah, he did. And now we get this movie, Sucker Punch. To paraphrase something from Robin Williams, was the name not a clue? Sucker punch. That's basically what this movie is. It's a sucker punch. Hey guys, hey, what's that? <laughs> yeah, that's what this movie is. I think you guys can tell from that that this is a rant because this movie sucks. I mean, Zach. Zach, what the heck? Were you high when you came up with this story? Were you like looking at Steve Shibuya, who's the guy that co wrote the screenplay with you? Were you like looking at him like smoking on Da Vinci's hookah? I got the crazy idea! I got this crazy idea about the girl in a mental hospital and daydreaming and delusions. It's going to make a real movie! Hey, it's, going to, it's going to be the masterpiece of my career! Almost flops. That's right, this movie almost flopped and deservingly so, because it had a budget of 82 and it made almost 90 million. That is way too much. And on IMDb, let me check and see what it has on IMDb real quick. A 6.2. Are you kidding me? This movie should not have higher than a 3. And that's just being generous because this movie, like I said, sucks. I mean, none of the the only person who ever does does a good job acting is uh, the main character's stepfather, and it's during the scene where he doesn't even say anything. It's all physical acting. Because the only things I'm gonna say the one, few things I like about this movie first. The only things I liked about this movie, the way the opening was done. I mean, no dialogue, just set to music, the way it's all physically acted. That I thought was good. Some of the fight scenes, granted they overuse CGI, which I will get to later, but they are creatively done. And also the costumes in the delusion, the ones that are practical. Those are good costumes. But other than that, this movie has nothing going for it. I mean, first of all... The main story you barely even see. Because basically the story is this girl who we just call Baby Doll, played by Emma Browning. Emily Browning, excuse me. She is put in a mental asylum by her stepfather after her mother dies and then she accidentally kills her sister. And it's there because of some backdoor dealing, because apparently she left all the her mother left all the money to her sister and her. The stepfather wants his greedy hands on it. So he talks with this one corrupt orderly to try to get her, her lobotomized, I guess, so he'll become her caretaker legally so he can use the money. Which just shows he's a, he's a bastard. Okay. Sorry if I seem half-assed, but... Ah, uh, movie, it's kind of hard to talk about. The plot makes no sense at points. Anyway. She's getting lobotomized. Which is basically what happens at the end. Yes, I spoiled the ending because no one should have to sit through this movie. No one. I'm surprised I was able. The only reason I was able to sit through this movie is because I was BSing with Gabo and Preston on Skype through chatting thing. Every time something happened, I would tell Gabo, like, I can't believe this is happening. Anyway, the majority of the story takes place in the first illusion because that's what the main the story is. There's the real world that we see hardly, then there's the first illusion, and there's the illusion. Inside of that delusion. And that's what we mostly saw in the trailers. Why couldn't that have been the movie? I mean, me, that's one thing me and Gabo talked when we were BSing on Skype. The movie could have been like... I know some people compare this story to Alice in Wonderland. This movie is basically Alice in Wonderland on acid. Even Willie Nelson, when he's smoking weed, would look at this movie and go... No. No. I mean... How it should have been is like with Alice in Wonderland, you know, it's real world and somehow, I don't know how, end up in the video game-like world and then that's 
what the story is. That would have been a more interesting movie than this. Now I know I'm getting off track. I'm going all over the place in parts, but it's kind of hard not to. Anyway, the main part that we see is basically where Baby Doll is in this brothel place, and she has to be a dancer. And it's through the dancing that the second delusions come in, where she's all in a video game-like world. Which, like I said, those are the only, one of the few parts of the movie that are actually good. A few problems I have with them is the overuse of CGI. Like the first enemies she fights are like giant samurais. I mean, you could have done those practically. I mean, granted their size. They say, "How do you do that?" Easy. You film them. Like you film, you film them, and then in the computer you enlarge them. So technically, it's minor C, minor computer generation, but it's an actual actor, and it would have looked better. Only thing that's good about those samurai is that one of them has a minigun. Now that's badass. A samurai with a minigun. Yeah, that's cool. And then of course the World War Two, World War One part. I mean, is it? Are they supposed to be like in a steampunk universe? Because that's what the German soldiers kind of remind me of: steampunk zombie German soldiers. But there are some good makeups in there, like the orcs in the fantasy world, those are it. The dragon, of course, is CGI, but that I expect to be CGI, so I'm not going to complain about that. But in those scenes, there's a lot of CGI. No CGI is here to stay, but can't you do models and stuff? I, I mean, those scenes would look better if it was actual something in front of the camera. It's just, I know it's a dream sequence, but still. Or delusion, excuse me. Delusion. And I can, I can say... I can see what the critics mean, because I did read some of the critic reviews before I watched this movie, and they panned it, rightfully so. One of the things they mentioned is this movie is kind of degrading against women, which I will say that it is. I mean, I mean, they try to do like an, a message that you have your own weapons and stuff, and try to be... Uh, it's kind of hard to define this. Um, you should... Be yourself, I guess. Not let others control you. Or control your destiny. That's what the message is, but it's kind of lost within all the other stuff. It's lost within shitty acting. I mean, I liked Emily Browning in a series of unfortunate events, but her career went down with this. Granted, it's nice to see her and the other female characters in their outfits, but with how the story is and stuff, that's not really much. I mean, it's nice visually, but then story-wise, you're like... And in a mo in a movie, the story is the most important aspect of it. Jeez, if it's a story that is a confusing and two sucks, then the movie's gonna suck as a whole, and it does. I mean, the villains you hate, but it's kind of hard to want the villains to get their comeuppance if you don't care about your protagonist, and you don't, because you barely even know anything about your protagonist other than that she's a daydreamer. I mean, that's basically what she does throughout the whole movie, Daydream. So once she gets lobotomized at the end, you don't care! I mean, Zack Schneider, was this your second draft or your first draft that they based this movie on? You should have done more drafts with the story you went with and then actually made us care about her. This is like a student film that sucks. Zack, I know you're better than this. Dawn of the Dead, you cared about your people, so when the people died, you gave a crap about them and you were like, oh no... Watchmen, you cared about the characters. You cared about all of them. Then 300, you cared about the characters, even though you all knew what was already going to happen to them, because it's a history movie, you all know what's going to happen. And from what I hear, in Legend of the Guardians, you care about your characters. Uh, now, if you had not written this movie, I would say, oh, it's just a bad movie, you didn't write it. But you wrote this, man. I have to say, Zach, if you should probably not write your movies. Now, if you do a movie that you write and direct and that turns out to be good, then you'll redeem yourself a little bit. But if it sucks more than this, man, Zach, stick to directing. Because there's some directors that are very good at directing, but when they try writing the movie and then directing it, not so well. There's some that are good at writing, but not good at directing. Goyer probably is a good example of that, but... Zach... Probably wait a couple movies before you try writing and directing again. I mean, don't turn into M. Night Shyamalan where each one of your movies that you write and direct gets worse and worse and worse and worse. I don't know what else to say about this movie. I mean, the plot, like I said, the plot is confusing and it sucks. You don't care about the actors. The villains you hate, but there's not really anything going for it. 
Oh, it's, um, my mind's forgetting about this movie. That's how much it is. How much it sucks. I guess my mind is reverting to how Wolverine lost his memories in the comics. His brain's like, nope, nope, nope. You don't need that information in there. So my brain is slowly taking the information out of my head. It's taking the files and burning them. <laughs> yeah, like in that SpongeBob episode. That's what it's doing because it wants me to forget Sucker Punch, or maybe the movie Sucker Punch me in the face, and that's why I'm forgetting. Uh. Emily Browning, she better get better work because of this movie. Uh, but then again, it was critically panned, so I don't think she probably will. But hopefully she does get better work. Because she was, this is not the type of movie. It was Like I said, it's Alice in Wonderland on ass. I know that, that they were probably trying to shoot for the Alice in Wonderland thing, but he failed. He epically failed. And also, I, another thing is, that time Zack seems like he's trying to be artsy-fartsy. Zack! Why would you try that in a movie like this? Doesn't really work. And also at the end, he kind of M. Night Shyamalan's us. Because there's one character that we see during the delusions, who we only see in the delusions, and then at the end, he turns out to be real. I'm like, is he supposed to be an angel? Because they mention angels in the opening prologue. Is he an angel? Did we suddenly walk into It's a Wonderful Life, directed by Jack Schneider? But where's the Jimmy Stewart character? Who is he played by? Is that Emily Browning? I don't think so. Bullshit. But we see that the secondary villain again has come up, as I will say, but it leaves us wondering what happens to the main villain. Never answered it. Hold on. Uh, now, my rating for this movie Sucker Punch. For the couple things I mentioned, I like it gets a one out of five. It gets two thumbs down. If it was up to me, I'd find every copy of this movie and burn it after chopping it up. And I have to say that the only way you can make this movie even watchable is if you watched it while you're stoned. But even then, you'd be like, "Dude, man, what the hell's going on, man? I don't know, man. This action actor is a douche, man. I don't know why I made the guy sound like a hippie, but it works." Willie Nelson. Anyway, that concludes this review. Hopefully, it wasn't too half-assed, but like I said, my mind is forgetting about this stuff, and thank God it is.